the experiment was simple. Compare ecosystems with otters to those without. He began with his home island of Anchitka. I knew a lot about what Anchitka looked like. I knew that sea urchins were common but very small. The next step was to arrange for a dive at nearby Shemya Island, a location with no otters. The most dramatic moment of learning in my life happened in less than a second. And that was sticking my head in the water at Shemya Island. It was just green with urchins and no kelp. And it all sort of fell into place in just an instant that the loss of otters from that system had completely reorganized that system from which kelps had probably been very abundant before the loss of otters to one in which the sea urchins now had become abundant in the absence of the otters and had eaten all the kelps. It was a striking demonstration of the green world hypothesis. Sea otters, the predators, were controlling the urchins that fed on the kelp. Remove the sea otters and the kelp forests disappear. Payne called these cascading effects of one species downward upon others, trophic cascades. Trophic cascade is when you have an apex predator controlling the distribution of resources and they lead to these cascades of indirect effects. Lots and lots of indirect effects. You have fewer sea otters, you have more sea urchins, you have fewer kelp. I expect every coastal species is probably impacted in one way or another by the presence or absence of kelp. Kelp forest fishes depend a lot on kelp. They're birds that feed in the kelp forest. They're invertebrates that feed in the kelp forest. Virtually everything that lives in the coastal zone depends upon that system in some way. So sea otters are another keystone species. They regulate the structure of this coastal marine community. The results are unambiguous. Sea otters drive this system from the top down. You know, the message is clear, and it's been enormously important in how ecologists tend to view the world. Estes returned regularly to Alaska to study otters. Some 20 years later, he noticed something strange was happening. We were capturing otters, having a devil of a time catching enough, and that was peculiar because I'd never had trouble catching otters. Otter populations seemed to be declining. He tried to think of every possible explanation. And we essentially lined up all of the hypotheses that we could think of that could be causing this population decline. He ruled out starvation. He ruled out disease. And then a third hypothesis emerged. 